Hello everyone, it's Aubrey. I want to welcome you to this live chat today. Coming from my back porch, it's a little chilly. I'm here in Irwin, Pennsylvania, uh, but it's a beautiful day. And I created this talk. It is called How Midlife Women Are Reinventing Themselves. And I'm gonna bring on some special guests today because I want you guys to hear from someone other than myself. Really in this group, you guys hear from me quite a bit. And I think it's so nice to hear other real life examples, testimonials, and just get to know people and how they have dealt with spots in their life that have been really challenging. So uh, I have a couple special guests that we are gonna interview and I'll invite them on here live. And if you're catching this in real time, um, please drop in the comments so that I know you're here and feel free to ask questions along the way. Also, if you're catching on the replay, give me a little hashtag replay. So for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Aubrey Warwick. I am a fitness expert as well as a nutrition specialist. And part of what I do is I help women at the most challenging seasons of their life reinvent themselves, long story short. And what that means exactly is that I help them do that through building a better relationship with food, a better relationship with their body, and harmoniously merging that with a positive mindset. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I am the first person who struggles with mindset sometimes and emotional or mental um, well-being. I just um, am kind of recovering, so to speak, from a really epic event that I experienced over this weekend. And I'm kind of, um, to be transparent, I'm kind of experiencing something called the post-show blues. For those of you who've ever gotten married before, you kind of know what I mean. After It's like after the wedding, after the honeymoon, you're like, oh my gosh, I was so happy and so filled with joy. And then a week later, you kind of crash. And what happens is we have these aspects to our life where I call it the swinging pendulum. And when the pendulum swings so far one way and then almost seems to crash um, the complete opposite way, we experience such extremes or polarities. I also relate it to the rock star syndrome where the rock star, the day of the concert, you know, they are just in their heightened glory. And then the day after the concert, I pretty much guarantee most rock stars <laughs> do not feel too good, right? So um, basically we want to find how we, we want to make sure we find these patterns in life. And today I want to address something that was shared to me not too long ago, but actually uh, two of my business coaches and they call it GPS. So write this down, or maybe you don't even need to GPS and it's, um, identifying your goal problem and then building a solution. And if you do this GPS with any aspect of your life, you are going to be able to get through and lean into the experience that you're having. Okay. So, um, my most recent experience that I had, I felt kind of a call to action. I'm 43 years old and I felt this kind of calling, so to speak, that I needed to up level myself. Now through the eyes of social media, that up leveling happens physically with a physical transformation. But what we don't see is the behind the scenes and the people that see it behind the scenes, let's say it's my husband, my son, and my closest friends. They see kind of what goes into a physical transformation. And, um, you know, we live in this physical, uh, material world, so to speak, but we don't have to have that aspect just be one dimensional. It's not the only part of what represents what we want to be and what we want to aspire to be. So, you know, I kind of felt this and I, um, I would say I go through a reinvention every three years. That is my pattern and it's reflected physically. Um, it's also reflected through my business right now. I'm doing a, a business rebrand and all of these things kind of have to happen in order to grow and evolve. And what I like to use this metaphor is to um, ascend a spiral staircase because most often or not, we sometimes feel like we're the hamster in the wheel. But if we kind of look at it differently, we could say, okay, it feels like it's the wheel, but each time 
we do something, we learn a little bit better, right? So, or at least we hope to, right? We don't, we wanna take two steps forward. If we take two steps forward, one step back, or inch by inch at the cinch. You know, I'm using all my cliches today for you guys. So without further ado, I wanna bring on actually my neighbor. Her name is Tanya, and she is one of the most positive people I know authentically, honestly. And whenever I need a good swift dose, Tanya, I'm inviting you right now, of positivity, I know she's the person to turn to because she has a great lens, I think just naturally, that she looks through um, in life, you know, sometimes I know I can be, um, oh, uh, what I r feel is very logical, but it can also be very negative. Sometimes my lens is a little too logical. I'm an Aquarius. Okay. But not that I want to blame it on my, ast my, my astrological side, but I, um, just keeping it real. Okay. So Tanya, I know she is right now. I'm going to bring her on video. I sent you to invite Tanya. Let's see if the technology forces are going to be with us today. I'm trying this new coffee. Where my husband got it's completely mold free coffee. Um, they like wash it. Yeah. Oh, there she is. Hey, oh, am I on? Oh, you are on. This is my first time being on Facebook live. Oh, oh awesome. Yeah. Well, I know you're going to be a natural and your hair and glasses look amazing as always. Oh, thank you. So, um, first of all, thanks for jumping on here, Tanya. And guys, I want you to know, literally just a day or two ago, I, I messaged Tanya and um, I was like, hey, and I, I knew she'd be up for it. <laughs> she was available. I said, hey, will you jump on here? And I just um, want to do an event that helps inspire people to reinvent themselves midlife. And you're a great example of that. You know, you are constantly reinventing yourself in different ways. I see it through your art. I see it through your business. I see it through your house. <laughs> and I'm always like, what is she doing now to just, you have such a creative mind. And I wanted to kind of just ask you a question in terms of where you are with your physical goals, um, because you have been doing um, our Strong Sexy You programs for over a year. I think since you started. Yeah. Which that, which I'm so flattered and I appreciate that so much. Um, but I know that you like it because, well, you keep coming back, but also it, it seems that that kind of fits your, um, your identity, you know, that you're, that you are constantly growing and evolving. So that's just through my lens. But, um, first of all, just tell us a little bit about, you know, your background in terms of, um, education, your business, um, family, that sort of thing. Okay, sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Tanya Godino. I live in Irwin right next door to Aubrey. So I've known Aubrey for a very long time. And before we met, I graduated from Penn State with a marketing background. And I was a teacher in the family consumer sciences department at Latrobe for about 10 years. Um, stayed home with my kids for a hiatus of about seven years and then recently bought a preschool. You can probably see all the pictures behind me of all the drawings. Um, so as far as fitness goals go, I struggled for a long time with consistency. I wasn't sure where to fit that in my day as far as teaching goes or even being a stay-at-home mom was hard too because we would go to the gym. I'd take my kids to the daycare. It would be good for about two or three days and then somebody would get sick and then we couldn't go for one or two weeks because then both of my kids would get it. So it was very frustrating for me at the beginning trying to do this on my own. And then I realized when Aubrey started her abs program during the pandemic that this is something I could try and we're home anyway, may as well give it a whirl. And the routines are doable from home. You can also do them at the gym, but I love that it's flexible. You don't have to always be on at a certain time. You can do them at 5 a.m. You can do them at 10 o'clock at night. They're always there for you to try. And I've done every single program and I've kept all of the workouts. I laminated all of them so they don't shrivel up or get burned or eaten by somebody. <laughs> and I go through these while we're in the off season and I can't wait for the next challenge to start because it definitely has changed my consistency goals. I do not miss a workout. I make sure it happens. Yeah. And I have seen that. I have seen that since we are neighbors you know, that I know that you've always embraced an active lifestyle, but 
I think it's so awesome that you kind of didn't give up. You know what I mean? Where when we have pattern interrupts through our life, you know, when we have, when, when I say life gets too lifey and we have young kids Mm -hmm. and again, there, there's always going to be something. And so you, you are, you had that goal where you're like, this is attainable. I know that I can do this, but I have this problem right now and it's not going to last forever. But if you don't build a solution to that problem, it will be a forever thing. Mm -hmm. And, and I've definitely noticed that, you know, working with people for the last several decades, just with behavior change coaching and, um, yeah. And I, I, it's awesome to see your transformation, you know, physically, and you are always really hungry and thirsty for knowledge because things are always changing in fitness and nutrition where we can biohack and we can, um, work smarter. I don't want to say, you know, that, that saying like work smarter, not harder. I feel like we're always working hard. So I, I don't resonate with that, but just work smarter and hard. Yes. And I enjoy the workout so much. And when I'm done with them, I feel so happy and I feel so good. And I want that feeling to continue. Yeah. So the oh. program going on, I'm still four days a week. I'm still meal prepping. I'm still writing down in my food app what I'm eating every day. And I think it really does help. It helps you stay consistent. And that was one thing I was not good at. Yeah. And now I think good at it yes i I, it. I agree i agree because you you found you know that that perfect um plan or system mm-hmm. and that's really really what what it's all about so yeah yeah and tanya you know so i shared my age you don't have to share your age but I, because when people used to ask me my age this was i hated it it would be like <laughs> asking someone their weight, like they'd be like, well, how old are you? And I would feel like I'd have to tell a lie. That was the only thing I felt like I had to tell a lie about. I'd be like, I hate that. Now I just say, you know, my chronological, my chronological age is 43. That's what it is. I love saying I'm 45 because people are like, wow, yeah. wait a minute, really? And I'm yeah. flattered by that because yeah. I don't feel it either. So that's even better. Yeah. Yeah. That is awesome. Well, I'm excited to have you for our next challenge with liftoff. And it's starting Sunday. So, um, yeah, we got some good things in store for you. And thank you for sharing just a little bit about your background. I always, I always like to do these interviews with people because then I, there's stuff that I maybe either forget about or that I miss. And it's kind of just nice to dial it back to kind of see you in a different light too. Cause you have, you wear so many hats and, um, it's nice to be reminded of those. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I hope everybody signs up for this program. You will learn so much. You will feel so good and you will love the results. Thank you, lady. All right. Well, hey, have a good rest of your day at school and I will see you soon. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Tanya. Okay. All right, guys. So we are going to bring on, let's see, I see Alyssa out there. Um, I might bring you on next, Alyssa, uh, because I don't see Christine. Let's let's do Alyssa, but I bet Christine is out there somewhere. But I'm going to grab Alyssa, a.k.a. Miss America. Add. Send invite. I know Alyssa is coming to us from the gym. She got a new new gym, guys. I know she's going to want to try my new coffee. I'm always doing new coffees, guys. Not always, but I do like the isogenic stuff still. Oh, hold on. Alyssa, do that again. Tell me that you, you want to jump on here. Bring them on. Oh, hold on. Send invite. They can't be added to your broadcast. Oh, you're connecting. You're connecting. Okay. All right. So as she's connecting, and I know a lot of folks will be watching this in the replay, um, I'm going to be ask, I'm going to be sharing with you a, a really cool um, story about Alyssa because just because okay let's see hopefully we can do this huh. it says that you're being that we're adding you Alyssa it's just taken a little while maybe I can tee you up a little bit so Alyssa no answer from the live video guest huh. all right maybe I'll, I'll try Christine we'll try Christine because there she is Right, gang. There we go. Christine won the luck of the draw. Hello. Hi. Hey, how are you? Hey, good. How are you doing? Doing great. Oh, you look great. You look so fresh. 
Oh, thank you. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> very fresh. Yeah. Thank so you. thank you for always jumping on here. And guys, I want to introduce to you Christine Furman. She is uh, now such a good friend of mine. And um, we just did a podcast together. She was on our Strong Sexy You podcast, um, specifically talking about how she moms so darn well with life um, on the go and traveling so much. But Christine and I met through our husbands, the Dans. Mm -hmm. My husband's name is Dan. Her husband's name is Dan. And yes. we really, really connected during the 2020 experience because she has a really cool business. I'm going to let you talk about your business. Tell us about how many kids you had. And, and then just tell me a little bit about, um, you just had a birthday. So I want to hear specifically what your next goal is to reinvent yourself. So take it away, Christine. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Aubrey, for having me. Um, Aubrey and I, we met and I was running a program. I still run it. It's called Edu Play Learning. And what I do is I provide curriculum and provide activities for families that have all of the materials, all supplies needed, delivered right to their door. And then I facilitate activities, different lessons, all kind of learning experiences with the families allowing them to be able to educate their kids in a fun and meaningful way while having me a certified teacher walk alongside them and be able to help guide them and their kiddos all along the way so that's how we met we had a great class that year i've continued to improve and you know you were talking about rebranding we're going through a lot of rebranding here too and up leveling so i really feel that i'm in that phase of my life as well, where we're up leveling a lot of things, you know? Mm -hmm. And yes, I just had my 39th birthday. So the last year of my thirties. And, and are we going to Vegas for your 40th or what? What are we doing? I am going to Vegas for my 40th. You coming? I am. I, feel, I better be invited. I for real am. <laughs> Come on. Good. All right. Well, we got, we got that goal. So just, just watch out world because for your 40th, we are really, really great inventing ourselves. Yeah, we are. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That'll be fun. So definitely. But so that's kind of where I'm at. Like it's that reinvention. It's realizing that, okay, some, someone said this comment to me, you know, during my birthday messages and they said, you know, just look back and see what you've accomplished in this uh, decade of your life. And it yeah. took me back and I was like, oh my gosh, like that was the first, I, when I was 30, I had Ella you know, wow. my first child. And it was like, Oh my gosh, I have accomplished so much in these past years, wow. you know, and, and the best is yet to come. I'm 39. Like to round out my thirties, like in a powerful way, mm. is just going to just put the icing on the cake, you know? Yeah. And, and that's something that I'm realizing, you know, after 35, things change, you know, after you have kids, things change. It's not as easy to mm -hmm. just do the workout and eat healthy. You know, there's a lot more that's involved into that healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've really been trying to perfect or not even perfect, but like get good at doing over yeah. the last 10 years, you know, yes. because I really started it when Ella was a baby and I wanted to be a good role model for my kids. Yeah. I wanted them to see me eating healthy. I wanted them to see me working out and being active mm -hmm. and be that positive role model so they can just follow suit. Because mm -hmm. for me, I always felt like I was behind the eight ball. You know, I yeah. felt like I always had to play catch up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So, so your programs have really helped me do that for sure of like building that confidence in me you know, yes. and really providing yes. me with those resources that I was longing to find. Building that confidence is huge. And um, as you were talking, you made me think of one question that was really, uh, well, I have two questions. One is kid-based is a lot of times I hear people, and these are, these are folks that they usually don't sign up for our programs, or maybe they're just not ready to really, but they tell me this, well, Aubrey, I, my kids won't eat that or it, because they feel that they've created a, an environment, maybe of already fast food and that sort of thing. And I want your advice on that. But I, I do believe that 
maybe just because they're not eating it now doesn't mean that they won't eat it someday. Because I know my husband, I think he used to eat Chef Boyardee out of a can until he's 22. And now he has the most eclectic palate. So I, w I, w I just wanted to hear from you. And every kid's personality is different. But how do you blend, you know, festive eating as well as healthy eating? Because I think your kids are very well-rounded eaters. They're, they're healthier eaters if, if I had to give a contrast than Rome. And he's more selective. <laughs> but they're, they're really open-minded. Yes. And one thing, and I can't contribute it to, you know, this is definitely what helped and what made that happen. But whenever we would cook dinner, Dan and I would cook our dinners and I wasn't making them something different, mm -hmm. right? Maybe I was making a turkey quinoa, you know, mix it all together with the vegetables or some kind of a stir fry or even mm -hmm. a burger, you know, and they're like, well, and I'm like, listen, you can eat your bun on the side with some bread and butter and you can yeah. eat a burger <laughs> hot yeah. up with some ketchup, you know, and you dip yeah. it in there and then yeah. here's your vegetables on the side, mm -hmm. you know? So it was really kind of not, not catering by saying, we're going to make something different, but it was giving them different options, food options with the food that we made and really making sure that every meal that they had, there was a protein, there was a vegetable and there was a fruit, you know, and it was really, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know, we just really were trying to make sure that it was a balanced meal for them and telling them why, why is this important? You know, you need the energy, you need yes. your brain yes. to be strong. Yes. You need to be able to, you know, think clearly. And that's something that I'm grateful to give them right off yes. the bat instead of having foggy brain later on and yes. saying, how do I clear this? Yes. Well, guess what? I've given you the tools already. So we yes. know how to clear that. Yes. And you and you are already doing the GPS, the goal problem solution. You know what, mommy, I'm tired. Okay, the goal is to get energy. That's you know, and what is the problem? Well, we maybe waited too long to eat. We're not drinking enough water, and so you're building those solutions for them. And you know that's what we do through the Strong Sexy You programs, on time and time again, and being being open minded with that. Now. Just, I have one more question to you since, you know, you and I had kind of a heart to heart and that's why you're signing up for liftoff that starts um, on Sunday, but you're like, Aubrey, listen, you know, I'm, I mean, you're great at, at evolving, but um, with your health and nutrition, but you know, I know, and cause I've, I, this happened to me before you've reached a point maybe like that some of the things that you were doing in the past aren't working now. Right. So you and I are working together to, to troubleshoot and will be, you know, to say, okay, the things that we did in the past, but maybe past programs, as well as, you know, anything out of my wheelhouse, you've worked with a functional medicine doctor and that sort of thing. Right. And some things guys, they just, what once was a fact is no longer a fact or right. what once worked. Now there might be a different issue in gut health or hormones changing or your environment. Yep. So yeah so um that seems to be kind of what your call to action is for this next program definitely definitely looking to detox definitely looking to learn how to do that more naturally how to yeah. you know yeah. really listen to my body and you know lean into my hormones lean into you know kind of how am i making sure that this fits my lifestyle you know i'm a busy mom i homeschool my kids i run a business you know, but I make sure that I make that a priority as soon as I wake up in the morning and get my workout in. I go for a walk, yes. you know, all of those things to really get my mind clear and really yeah. say, I'm ready to start the day and I'm ready to tackle it and take on anything that life throws at me. Yeah. So I'm excited. Yeah. I'm so pumped to get yeah. started. Yeah, you know, having you and Tanya back to back, it's, I don't know if it's something with the, the school teacher in your blood or something, but you guys both share that awesome energy and it's great to have you guys in our group because it's palpable even through our private facebook groups you know that people are really supporting each other and um, we're going to start to do more more chats like this during our mindset calls and lift off so that people can get to know each other but it is that is one area to help reinvent yourself is proximity it's to surround yourself with people who are doing the things who want the same things that you do and that don't have that victim mindset so Christine, you are the best. And I know you're coming to Pittsburgh, but I won't get to see you, but safe travels. Thank and you. I, yeah. So, but yeah, we'll be talking here in a few days and on to our next transformation together. 
Yes, I can't wait. Thanks so much, Aubrey. All right, Chris, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. So now, all right. You know what? In true Alyssa Siegel fashion, you know, we round her out. And of course, guys, I don't know. Maybe I need a new phone. I have an iPhone 8. <laughs> don't laugh, but it's still, it's still pretty good. But it, my camera's dying. I've been using my camera so much. I just, there she is. <laughs> That's so to... perfect. <laughs> Guys, I want you to meet Alyssa, Miss America Siegel. I call her Miss America for a reason. For those of you who don't know her, a lot of a lot of these folks in this group, Alyssa, might not know you. So I'm going to give you a fair introduction. But Alyssa just had a birthday yesterday, what we're celebrating today. And Christine Furman just had her birthday two days before Alyssa. Mm -hmm. So we got lots mm -hmm. of birthdays, lots of Virgos. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm attracting the Virgo energy today. I love it. Um, but so Alyssa... I think she knows how to make an entrance. Don't let her fool you. But I call her Miss America because she will make an entrance. She's not early. She's not late. She's right on time. So as soon as you're ready to start, you're like, is Alyssa going to come? Boom. She's right through the door. And I just always tell her, give me that Miss America way. That's so well. So, yeah. yeah now, um, so Alyssa and I, we met actually um, kind of during, like, it was around the 2020 experience. Right. It was, it was the uh, end of 2018. It was for my 40th, my 40th birthday. 40th. Yeah. Yes. So this is interesting. And, and actually, I share a similar story with you and Christine Yoder, who's not going to come on to uh, today. But I remember when Alyssa, she called my studio line and she was looking for like some aerial classes. Mm -hmm. Right. And she wanted to do the silks and I was like, well, I don't really have silks. I have this aerial hoop thing. And it didn't seem like she was that interested, but she ended up booking a lesson and then she got hooked. <laughs> and we met for a, a great reason because of the pandemic. I was going to close my studio doors. And Alyssa's like, now hold up, honey. Don't you do that. She's, and you really were the person, you were the catalyst. I would not have these online programs if it wasn't for you. So I really got to give you a massive shout out because I always kind of wanted to do the online programs and I felt um, maybe I was lacking a little confidence or I was lacking support. And Alyssa was like, listen, I've done some online programs. I got your back. And it's because of you that uh, really we strong sex to you is where it is today. So I have mm -hmm. really you from the bottom of my heart to thank for that. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, it was a five-year plan, and we just reversed it, remember, when the <laughs> pandemic hit. We were going to start with a studio and work into online programs, and then it was like, okay, everything's shut down. And you're like, I'm going to shut the studio. No, no, we're flipping the plan. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. We, and we did Booty Boot or like what? And we did the virtual, virtual program. Virtual booty member booty builder, yeah. And then it went to Booty Builder. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and that – that really kicks it off how, you know, Alyssa, you are the queen at um, reinvention. And that, that, that is a great example where, you know, you're like, wait a minute, I see an opportunity here. And that's not only what a good friend and partner is, is for, but talking about attracting the right person into your life. Yeah. And, um, you know, you and I have both done some awesome physical transformations. We kind of play ping pong yeah. with each other with ours. Um, we've done some fashion transformations together too. Mm -hmm. That, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm actually just kind of like reflecting back on our year, like how cool it's been um, to witness each other evolve. Absolutely, we've had a lot of, a lot of life experiences. And yeah, yeah. So I wanted you to kind of highlight, you know, um, gosh, you've had a lot of, I think breakthroughs since I have met you and I know you just keep having more and more and more with family, friends, but really with yourself. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you could touch upon one that's kind of speaking to you right now and where your biggest breakthrough has been um, now sitting at the fine wine age of 43. Um, well, I was not prepared for this call. <laughs> I know she was another one, guys. I was like, oh, I know Liz is going to get yeah. up today. We, we did a little last minute because I ended up getting a little sick under the weather. So, you know, 
I usually don't get sick and this is what happens. <laughs> so I guess I, I, maybe I'll use my, um, so I've been, you know, making a health change. Like I started my health change at like 38, mm -hmm. um, just decided that I didn't want to, I mean, I was never like bigger, so I never had to like lose a lot of weight, but, um, definitely recomposition in like, I was very weak. I could barely even do a push up, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I just decided that I wanted to be healthy and strong. So it's been very, a very recent journey that, um, I have gone this way. So maybe what I will share is my husband's story because he just recently, um, got a Bowflex machine and, um, he's for the last two years. So as and what I do want to point out, if you are getting healthy, do it for yourself, make the time, make yourself a priority. You may want others to join you, but let them watch you and let them want to do it for themselves. Because if you ask them, then it creates a problem. So like I never once said to my husband, I mean, if he would say something, I would be like, well, you know, this, if do you want, do you want to just talk to me about it or do you want some suggestions and he would either go, oh, I'm just bitching, you know, or I want suggestions. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I would give him the suggestions. And um, it's a very nice way to um, do that. I need to take, I'm taking notes because sometimes when I hear someone, I'm like, well, I got your answer. And, it, yeah. and you need to say, yeah. well, especially, are we just venting right now? Yeah. Especially with your kids, your kids too. Like, yeah. you know, they, they want to like talk about their day and be like, or they're going through, you know, as they get older, like a breakup or something like that, you need mm -hmm. to be like, okay, do you want to just, are you just venting? Do you want to just talk? Do you just want, do you want comfort? Or do you want me to give you advice? Do you want advice? Because sometimes they don't want that, you yeah. know? And just, just like us, right? Sometimes yeah. you just want somebody, you're just not at that point. You're almost just thinking out loud. Yeah. You just need to kind of, yeah, let it go. And you just want the comfort. But anyway, so he, so he's been saying it for the last two years and then he would get some weights and he would like get on a roll and he, he was traveling. So he would do like the gym at the hotel. He does not like to work out in a gym. Like he does not like other people around him. Like if he goes to the gym in the hotel and there's people there, like he'll leave. <laughs> like that's it's okay. Don't work it. Like he's still not over that. But anyway, um, so he decided he wanted to get like a home gym equipment and we researched and Bowflex seems to be the number one like starter gym, you know, easy. But even then, like, you know, he puts this machine together and um, he's like, well, what do I do now? Like, you know, they have a list of the things. I was like, well, let me see the book. Like you need a plan. And that's, that's my next piece of advice. You can just join a gym you can, you know, work out at home. But if you don't, aren't following like a plan, it's not going to work. Like you need, uh, my, me still to this day, like I need to check off the list, you know, because what he was doing when he was doing his weights, he'd be like, oh, I did this. And I'd be like, that's great, honey. You literally worked your chest and only your chest. <laughs> like, you know, you didn't touch the buys or the tries or, you know what I mean? Or leg day, what's leg day, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so you do, you need a comprehensive plan to work that into your lifestyle. And you, you can, you can make, you just have to make yourself a priority. I understand that you might have kids and responsible, they're in sports, but you can always always find the time you have to make the time and that's what I told him too like what when is it going to be good for you like do you want to schedule yours because he doesn't take a lunch mm -hmm. he's a workaholic I'm like do you want to schedule a lunch and do it at lunch and he's like no I think I'd rather do it after work I'm like okay well then you have a stopping time because he when he's when he's out of town it's different but when he works from home I mean if I don't get him sometimes he'll just stay on it you know because there's just so much work to do so I'll be like, you have a stopping time and then you go upstairs. We put it in our, the room outside our room. So like, it's like the workout room. Um, and you set that time mm -hmm. and you tell the kids, I used to tell the kids this too. I'm like, unless you're on fire, don't get me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is my time. And yeah. you set the great time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, so far. And I think that we really working. Yeah. yeah. I am so glad. And it, so it's been you know, five years for him to kind of witness. I mean, he's witnessed you go through a lot. Yeah. You know, and at some, and some points probably like, who is this 
new <laughs> woman, right? So in, yeah. When we go through transformations, our significant others kind of, they're like, okay, yeah, that's them doing their thing. And then suddenly they're like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. And that it can kind of shape them to the point where then it does create change and questions internally in the other person that they have to go through. So it is, um, you know, whenever you're in a um, relationship it is kind of that ebb and flow that give and take mm -hmm. to be communicative with that and you know time is a big deal you know, for a lot of people and that's where I think what we've mastered with our strong sex youth programs a lot of times I think why people have stuck with it is because of our signature morning ritual yeah. and for those of you guys who have not tried the programs or if you have you know what the morning ritual is um, in that without a shadow of a doubt has created long lasting habits with people. 100%. Yes. Yeah. Even if you just yeah. get that done, like you've done something, but then it yeah. creates that, like you want to, you want to do more. Yeah. yeah. Now, one thing I wanted to kind of round this out and that's a really great story to share with people of how to go about with such tact in order to support those around you in your external environment to change their behavior behavior because what happens is it's usually the opposite we succumb to maybe poor habits let's say if you live with um someone who smokes maybe then you start smoking um or maybe someone who is buying a lot of junk food and then you're like oh my gosh i have to eat the junk food but you can turn the tables and that's kind of what you did not that you know you had the in your external environment but you could have very easily said well my spouse doesn't work out so it makes it hard yeah and that yeah that was never you there. It was just kind of like, no, I, I, you changed your identity. Cause we had a big identity, <laughs> identity call last yeah. week when you shared yeah. in, in the group that was really powerful about, you know, how, how do you want to show up? And that was for me, um, looking back when I was like a, a young, young girl, I knew that I wanted to be a dancer. I felt like if I was a dancer, I was going to show up a certain way and people were going to think this of me and all these things. When you're a little kid, you know, I wanted to be this character. Her name was Tina, the ballerina. And I think back at, about Tina, the ballerina dancing through gay Perry of, okay, I kind of ingrained that in myself, but now as adults, in order to reinvent yourself, now you have to ingrain a different identity. And I've heard you say that before where you, you started to compete in bodybuilding competitions mm -hmm. and I'm, bodybuilding, let's use that as an umbrella term, fitness shows, bikini competitions, there's different, you know, divisions to that category. But I loved how the one day you told one of your um, patients, cause you're a dental hygienist, um, that I'm a bodybuilder yeah. and that, that was a big deal. I say yeah. Because sometimes we feel like we're an imposter, you know? Yeah. No, no, no. I say it all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah, I do. I'm a bodybuilder mm -hmm. and like originally they think like, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I'm like different degrees. And I, I describe our, our, um, sector of it as the work is done outside of the game, you know, I mean, there's still work to be done oh, yeah. in the game, yeah. and everything. And it's more that to me, it's the eye, but, but all the work is done outside of it. And it is a very self motivating, you know, you have to, because no one's, I mean, you might have a coach, but unless they're right there beside you, like slapping the donut out of your hand, yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> then yeah. you, it's a very mind thing and you just have to make yourself a priority. Yeah. And absolutely. your goals and your health. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, what would you say to someone who a lot of times, you know, what I share on social media, especially after this weekend that, um, you were at mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, people think, oh, well, Aubrey, I don't want to compete in a bikini show for a goal. Like that's so extreme because it is an extreme sport and that's not what I'm trying to project that others should do. I know that I've attracted people who say, Hey, can you show me how it's done? Um, mm -hmm. kind of thing. But what are some other things that you would recommend someone if they're like, listen, that, that whole sport of bodybuilding bikini, it is not for me, but I'm floundering here. Um, I need another goal. Okay, so when I first started um, deciding to take health, um, I chose running. Um, and I'm, I've am i come to the conclusion that I, I like 5Ks, anything other than that, like I'm bored. Like I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of how I started was I had a goal of a 5K race. Mm -hmm. 
And so I got, there's a, um, I can't remember the name of the app, but there's an app that, you know, um, you start 30 seconds run or 20 seconds run, 15, 60 minutes or 60 seconds walk. Like, you know, like it's like it, yeah, yeah intervals to the point mm -hmm. to where you're then running for like longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Just took it and try yeah. inch. Yeah. Running is really common with a lot of people. And I think that it's about how you want to measure it too. One thing because I that I want to tell people, because some people jumping on are, are from um, Fitness Envy as well. And, you know, our whole lives, you might be identifying with an old identity from your past. For example, um, when people come to my studio, they always tell me, well, I'm not a dancer. I'm not a dancer. And I'm like, you've been here for 10 years. You are a pole dancer mm -hmm. and you need to start saying that Yes, because th we feel like, cause we don't, we don't actually make the connection if we don't have self-awareness, right? We're like, oh my gosh, I, I do have to look back and mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a pole dancer or, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm a runner. And it's not that that's the only thing, right? But sometimes we think, well, if I didn't go to school for it, Right. Let's right. say for me, I'm, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a business owner. And those are facts. Mm -hmm. These are just hats that I wear. I'm a mom. These are easy facts, but there's stuff that sometimes we just feel like, am I entitled to use that title? Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, you, I mean, let's say I've never, you know, practiced, um, Western medicine. I'm not going to call myself a doctor. <laughs> okay? right. Right. We're not going to that degree. Right. But, you know, there, there does have to be a switch over. And we do a lot of self-awareness um, exercises in our Strong Sexy You programs. I think that's where the biggest value is. We do weekly mindset coaching mm -hmm. um, twice a week. Twice a week. Because, yeah, yeah. because we can, we can have all the structure and all the plan. But without the mindset coaching, and like you said, Alyssa, you know, if you don't have someone there for you slapping the donut out of your hand, this is really the, the next best thing. It because really, I mean, yeah. I'll have your address once you sign up and I will drive <laughs> to your house to slap the donut out of your head. <laughs> Don't think no, I won't. But the accountability yeah. is there. Yes, the accountability, the accountability is program. There. Yeah. So you're literally just setting that time up for yourself, following the program, and you have the accountability, you have the support if you start to snap, I don't know, the support if you start to, you know, slack off. Yeah. yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. It's. It is a uh, very hands-on. Um, yeah. Well, thank you, Miss America, for tuning uh -huh. in, and I'm excited to celebrate you and your birthday and all you do tonight. And thanks for lifting me up. I love uh, doing these things. It always makes me feel good to connect with you and to connect with other people. That's mm -hmm. what we do best. And um, gang, if you're tuned into the replay, let us know. Remember that Liftoff 2.0 is our six-week virtual program that is starting Sunday. And you want to jump on that. It's going to be Miss America, me, and Andy Wagner, also in this group. She's at Martha's Vineyard right now with her mom oh, taking a little vacation. Those trips together. It's so special. Yeah, it is. It really is. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, so we will, um, we want to hear from you. What you need to do if you're interested in Liftoff, you have to directly message me. Or if you know Alyssa, directly message her and we can send you the link for the program. So again, we want to thank you guys. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments, but remember to DM us with the details and we might even give you something special just for that DM. <laughs> Otherwise, gang, we will be tuning in to this group weekly um, to provide value with you and we hope that we catch you soon. All right. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.